living off my son's money, and you have the nerve to be rude. I don't even want to speak to you. That's how my mother-in-law, Catherine, yelled at me. After that, she truly started ignoring me. Before I knew it, I had been on the receiving end of her silent treatment for three months. To make matters worse, Catherine and my husband did something unthinkable. Huh? The key doesn't work. Turns out they changed the locks on our home without telling me. Fed up, I secretly sold the house and decided to move. My name is Karen, a 29-year-old office worker. I've been married to John for two years. We met at a party. We both attended a party thrown by a mutual friend. John is three years older than me and works for a conventional company. He's in sales, really good at talking, and pretty entertaining. He seemed to take a liking to me and asked for my contact info, and soon we started seeing each other. He was incredibly fun to be around, and I found myself increasingly attracted to him. After a while, he confessed his feelings, and we became a couple. We dated smoothly for about a year and a half before he proposed. I can't imagine a life without you, Karen. Will you marry me? He popped the question at a fancy restaurant with a beautiful night view, offering me a ring. Even if it was cliche, I loved it and immediately said yes. And so we got married. We had our family meeting, went through our ceremony, and everything was perfect. Many of our co-workers and friends attended the wedding, making it a really happy occasion. After our honeymoon, we started living together. Both of us work, so we split household chores to balance our responsibilities. John used to live at home and had helped Catherine with cooking, so he was good at household tasks. Moreover, he's an excellent cook, and his homemade meals are delicious. On days off, we go out on dates and spend a lot of wonderful time together. I truly believe I'm lucky to have married him. Two years into our marriage, we're still madly in love and living a happy life. But that doesn't mean everything is perfect. The problem is Catherine. From the first time we met, she seemed cold toward me. The issue apparently was my educational background. Oh, you graduated from a rather low-level college. I can't trust people who didn't work hard in school. That's how Catherine belittled me. Sure, my college wasn't top tier. But I chose it not for its prestige, but for the courses it offered that I was interested in. I don't judge people based on their educational level. And frankly, I think it's irrelevant once you're out in the real world. So I was shocked when Catherine mocked me for my education. The tension was palpable during our family meeting, and my husband looked noticeably uncomfortable. I had my reservations about Catherine before we got married, but I loved him, so I went ahead with it. Catherine lost her husband a few years back and now lives alone in her in-law's house. As a result, she'd often visit us. And every time she did, she would have something to complain about to me. You really suck at cleaning. I can't deal with sloppy people. Make sure you clean every nook and cranny. My husband was the one who had cleaned the day before Catherine arrived, but something told me it'd be awkward to say that, so I kept quiet. I'd just apologize and wait for the storm to pass. However, Catherine kept coming over and berating me. You're uneducated, can't do household chores, and you don't even have kids. Seriously, you have nothing going on for you. How did you even manage to get with John? Her words were a real blow, especially when I was already feeling down. Finally, I'd had enough and talked to my husband about it. Can't we do something about Catherine's attitude toward me? What do you mean, her attitude? She's constantly insulting me. Really? I never noticed. I was taken aback by that. My husband didn't think her comments were derogatory. Learning this shocking fact in our second year of marriage left me stunned. Are you serious? Are you? I don't think mom intends to be mean. I started to wonder if my own perceptions were warped. That... 
Am I not normal? No, it wasn't me. It was my husband and Catherine who were both out of touch. That thought festered, along with my growing distrust for my husband. I had sensed hints of his mommy issues for a while. It had never been a problem until now. His mommy issues started causing me real concern. Mom says you should cook more nutritious meals, so can you add more variety to the menu? We both work, you know. I can't make elaborate meals all the time. A wife's cooking can motivate a husband to work harder and succeed, so please make more dishes. I think you've been skimping. Fine. I reluctantly expanded the menu, which did make dinner prep more labor-intensive. But what really got to me was when Catherine found out my husband was also contributing to the housework. How dare you make John do household chores? A wife should never do that. Stop it right now. Catherine yells at me like that. I couldn't just take it anymore. My husband and I both work, so it only makes sense to share the chores. You, my daughter-in-law, dare to have an opinion about me? Unbelievable. This is why I can't stand people without a proper education. What I'm saying has nothing to do with education. In fact, I think my view is more relevant to modern times. Your perspective, Catherine, is outdated. Upon hearing me call her views outdated, Catherine's face turned beet red. Enough. Stop making fun of me. I won't tolerate this. Catherine then ran to my husband to tattle on me. My husband, furious, called me over. Hey, mom is really upset. Why are you messing with her? It's your mom who's causing trouble, not me. I tried to explain my side of the story, but my husband made a shocking statement. It's all your fault, isn't it, Karen? Wait, were you listening? He shot me a glare. Then my husband glared at me with a disgusted look on his face. What's with that attitude? You've become so disrespectful. Just like mom said, it's not right for a wife to act like this. Really? Now even my husband is saying this. I was truly disheartened. I thought my husband had different values than Catherine, but he seemed to be heavily influenced by her. Can I really continue this marriage and be happy? I was at a loss, drowning in uncertainty. When my husband made another unbelievable comment, Mom is moving in with us. I asked when she would come, wondering if she would come again. Starting tomorrow. I felt uneasy with the phrase starting tomorrow. What do you mean starting tomorrow? Isn't it just for tomorrow? When I asked with a sense of dread, my husband replied, We're having my mom move in with us starting tomorrow. Move in? I could barely believe my ears. Why is this suddenly about living together? My mom says it's a hassle to keep coming over here all the time, so we figured she might as well move in. What? Why would you decide that without discussing it with me? I'm the breadwinner here. It's my call. It was more obvious that my husband was completely swayed by his mother, Catherine. She must be telling him a wife should obey her husband. But making a unilateral decision to live with Catherine is unacceptable. The next day, Catherine arrived as if it was the most natural thing, lugging huge bags with her. She boldly took over a room on the first floor, acting as if she had been living here all along. Karen, get the coffee going, will you? You're such an inconsiderate daughter-in-law. Hey, Mom's tired from moving. Get it together. Catherine and my husband immediately started to berate me. The thought of this happening every day was unbearable. I started making preparations for any unforeseen circumstances. Catherine continued to boss me around. But at the time, I was immersed in a significant work project and wanted to focus. So I just ignored whatever Catherine or my husband said. Why are you coming home so late? It's Karen's job to make dinner. Why are you making us wait? I had to work late. You two seem to have eaten already. What's the problem? 
When I said that, both my husband and Catherine glared at me, their faces red with anger. It's infuriating, living off my son's money, and you dare talk back. I don't even want to speak to you. Catherine yelled. What on earth is she talking about? I'm not living off my husband's money. Actually, I earn more than he does. But Catherine seemed to be under some sort of misconception, and she actually started ignoring me. Whether I greeted her or had a question, she ignored me. My husband started to join her in ignoring me. Before I knew it, I had been ignored for three months. I was busy with the work project and actually found their non-interference relaxing. Who knew being left alone could feel so good? They both looked at me with smug smiles, thinking they were hurting me by ignoring me. I saw no harm in letting them believe that even making a show of being subdued and downcast. But as my project reached its climax, I had to work even more overtime. And working together as a team, we finally completed the project. Towards the end, I was so focused that I had completely forgotten about Catherine and my husband. I guess I was so out of it that even if I was being ignored, I wouldn't have noticed. But at some point, Catherine and my husband realized I wasn't affected at all. And then they did something unthinkable. Huh, my key's not working. No matter how many times I tried, the key I had wouldn't fit into the lock. Turns out, they'd changed the locks without telling me. As I was desperately trying to get in, I heard Catherine and my husband talking inside. Is that a burglar? Ha ha ha! But we're home alone, so it can't be a break-in, right? <laughs> maybe it's trespassing. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should call the cops. <laughs> they were loudly laughing and talking. I couldn't believe it. They had taken it this far. That was the last straw. I secretly decided to sell the house and move. Actually, this house was a family home my parents had left to me when they retired to the countryside last year. So I had every right to sell it. And I'd already had it appraised, just in case something tricky happened with Catherine living here. So I could sell it right away. I stayed in a business hotel and informed my parents of the situation and my plan to sell. They were so disappointed in my husband and Catherine that they gave me the go-ahead. So I immediately contacted a real estate agent and sold the house. I had a locksmith come and unlock the door for me. When I entered, Catherine looked at me, startled. How were you able to get in? You didn't break the lock, did you? It was Catherine's voice, one I never wanted to hear again. Ignoring her yells, I started packing my stuff. Hey, say something. I'll call the police for trespassing. I continued with my plans to leave without paying her any mind. I had also brought movers with me, so they started taking away my large items. Catherine kept shouting things like, You think you can get away with this, thief? But I kept ignoring her. The locksmiths and movers looked uncomfortable around Catherine. That's because I had told them she was the mother of my dementia-stricken husband and had changed the locks, mistaking my home for her own. The more she screamed the more it looked like her condition was severe. I held back laughter and proceeded with the move efficiently. In no time, all my stuff was gone. I left the already filled out divorce papers on the table and walked out. Catherine was yelling something, but I ignored her and left. Let her taste the bitterness of being completely ignored. My husband called me that night, extremely angry. Hey, what do you think you're doing, stealing from this house? I decided to engage my husband in a meaningful conversation. What are you talking about? I've only taken what I bought with my own money. And speaking of which, remember the house itself was passed down to me from my parents. You've been so busy impressing Catherine that you've started to believe your own lies. Ah, my husband seemed to finally remember after hearing me out. His phone was on speaker, so I also heard Catherine's voice chime in. Wait, what's going on? Good if Catherine is listening. 
That makes things easier. Catherine, since you're listening, perfect. I've already sold the house, so please leave immediately. Also, sign the divorce papers. If you don't agree to the divorce, I'll take this to court. Both of them were speechless at my statement. What's the matter? Giving me the silent treatment again? I don't mind. But just so you know, I will kick you out without any hesitation. I knew they weren't really ignoring me. They were just at a loss for words, but I said it anyway. As expected, my husband finally said, Wait, please. But I ignored him and hung up. Shortly after, I initiated divorce proceedings through my lawyer. My husband quickly agreed to the divorce, likely out of fear of a court battle. Subsequently, both my ex-husband and Catherine were evicted. Though they could have afforded a decent apartment with the money from the house sale and some pensions, it turns out Catherine had been wasting money and had paid off her debts with my father-in-law's inheritance. Apparently, she continued her spendthrift ways, making my ex-husband think he could afford to buy a house. Now he's struggling, trying to pay off the debt Catherine accrued. Despite the long-winded explanation and his plea to get back together, I have completely ignored him. Now I live alone in a comfortable apartment. I plan to save the money from the house sale for my retirement. For now, I'm done with love. I'll focus on my career and work towards getting a promotion.